Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement. Now, I'm sure we all realize that we're just a few bad decisions away from World War III. Uh, this not only includes the conflict that continues to unfold there in Ukraine, but it was just this past Sunday when Putin held a working meeting with Chinese Defense Minister Ling Sheng Fu, and this after last month's meeting when Putin met with Chinese President Xi Jinping in order to hammer out their No Limits Partnership, thereby strengthening their economic, their political, and their military ties. Meanwhile, China has been reducing their economic exposure to the United States as they continue to sell off U.S. treasuries. And it was just last week when they engaged in uh, three days of military drills, which were designed to simulate a blockade of Taiwan. That's right. They're selling off U.S. treasuries. And meanwhile, they're engaging in drills that include anti-aircraft uh, anti carrier uh, and nuclear-capable bombers, uh, which they plan to use as a defensive line against the U.S. as they gear up to conquer Taiwan. At the same time, the head of the Chinese Communist Party Central Committee Foreign Affairs Commission office, Wang Yi, he just ordered Germany to support their efforts to peacefully conquer Taiwan. That's right. China is preparing to peacefully conquer Taiwan. And let's not forget that, you know, as our military has been making sure that everyone is respect respecting people's preferred pronouns, China's actually been developing next-gen missile technology, which is now able to defeat any known American defensive system. At the same time, foreign ministers from China, from Russia, Pakistan, as well as Iran, they recently held a meeting about Afghanistan. And I can't help but to wonder how they prepare and are preparing and planning to use, you know, all of the weapons that Biden left behind after his botched uh, withdrawal from that region. And listen, as China, Russia, Pakistan and Iran discuss their joint efforts there in the region of Afghanistan, well, Iran continues to engage in a proxy war against Israel. According to Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, Iran is waging a multi-front war of attrition against the state of Israel. And then just to be clear about this, Gallant went on to inform us that Iran is, and I quote here, continuing its attempts to establish itself on the northern front and at the same time sending its proxies to Judea, Samaria, and Gaza. Now put this in, in biblical terms. Israel is now being attacked from Dan to Beersheba, and you better believe that Iran is fueling the fires of this proxy war as they gear up to engage in a full-scale invasion of Israel. Now, with that being the case, you might be interested to know that the crown prince of Iran, Reza Pahlavi, uh, he just arrived there in the land of promise in order to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu. And after arriving there at the Ben Gurion International Airport, the prince of Iran declared this, and I quote him, We are very happy to be here and are dedicated to working toward the peaceful and prosperous future that the people of our region deserve. From the children of Cyrus to the children of Israel, we will build this future together in friendship. Wow, the crowned prince of Iran just appealed to King Cyrus, who I'll remind you, was the Persian king who released the children of Israel from their Babylonian captivity. And not only that, but King Cyrus also gave the Israelites the permission and the money that they needed to go and rebuild the temple there in Jerusalem. Now, it should be noted that the Prince of Iran, he's actually been living in exile for more than 40 years. The reason why? Well, it's due to the fact that millions of Iranians rose up against his father, the Shah, and, and they demanded a return uh, of Ayatollah, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, uh, resulting in the end of the Iranian monarchy. And, and by early 1979, the people of Iran decided to become uh, an, an Islamic Republic. And it was at that point in time when the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps was established by a decree issued by Khomeini. Uh, now, with all that being the case, the crowned prince of Iran, he's been living here in the U.S. for many, many years. Meanwhile, the Islamic Republic of Iran has been guilty of creating a full-fledged human rights crisis as anyone who pr protests their power is quickly put to death. As a matter of fact, Iran executed at least 582 people just last year alone, which was a 75% uh, increase from the previous year. And listen, as the civil unrest there in Iran continues to increase, 
The exiled prince of Iran continues to address these human rights concerns, and he's doing this by advocating for a regime change, which would then include those who claim to represent the country's democracy movement. And as he encourages the people of Iran to embrace the secular, liberal, and democratic uh, aspirations that many Iranians uh, now hold, he's simultaneously preparing to work with Netanyahu there in Israel in order to create what he's calling the Cyrus Accords. Here's how he put it in a statement that was released just before his flight to Israel. And I quote him here, The Iranian and Jewish people have ancient bonds dating back to Cyrus the Great and Queen Esther. As the children of Cyrus, the Iranian people aspire to have a government that honors his legacy of upholding human rights and respecting religious and cultural diversity, including through the restoration of peaceful and friendly relations with Israel and Iran's other neighbors in the region. Wow, without, without debate, this is incredible. This is incredible. And yet the prince goes on and, and, and puts a finer point on, on his plan by declaring this. He says, a democratic Iran will seek to reestablish ties with Israel and our Arab na uh, neighbors, perhaps as part of a future Cyrus Accords. In my view, he says, that day is closer than we think. Wow. The exiled prince of Iran has traveled to Israel in order to create the Cyrus Accords with Netanyahu. As a matter of fact, they already met just yesterday. And after that meeting, Prince Pahlavi, uh, he uh, posted a tweet which not only proposed a peace plan <clears throat> between uh, Iran and Israel, but he also quoted scripture which refers to the rebuilding of the temple. And here's how he put it in that tweet. And I, and I quote here, So said Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of the heavens delivered to me, and he commanded me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judea. Now, this passage that, that he was quoting uh, is actually found in Ezra chapter 1. This is where the king of Persia, Cyrus, he informed the people of Israel that the Lord was calling him to help them to return and rebuild the temple. Well, the prince, after quoting this Bible verse from Ezra, he then concludes this post by adding this, and I quote him again, 2,500 years ago, Cyrus the Great liberated the Jewish people from captivity and helped them rebuild their temple in Jerusalem. It is with profound awe that I visit the western wall of that temple and pray for the day when the good people of Iran and Israel can renew our historic friendship. This is incredible to say the least. And it may just be that we're about to see some sort of treaty that uh, could set the stage for the rebuilding of the third temple, but you know, not before the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps you know, is just pushed over the edge. And I have no doubt that this possible peace plan uh, is going to push Iran into full scale war. With all this in mind, we can take great comfort in knowing that all of this is unfolding just as the Lord has already revealed. And what this means is that the king of kings, he's still on the throne. He's still on the throne. And you better believe that the name of the Lord is still a strong tower where the people of God can go and rest. And listen, even when our good shepherd leads us through the valley of the shadow of death, there's still no reason to fear the enemy. And the reason why, it's because the Lord Jesus is with us and the good shepherd has promised to protect us. With that, we can rejoice in knowing that we are rapidly approaching the rapture of the church. But until that day comes, we can also rejoice in knowing that those who are following the good shepherd Jesus, well, we can rest assured that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And, and until we are, we are we're finally dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. With that being the case, I encourage you, walk by faith with our Savior Jesus. And as we walk by faith with Jesus, he will help us to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.